Hello, and uh, welcome to the Halo Forge epidemic. This is Abel Sir Thomas. And Yardbird92. And uh, we're here with the newest installation of Forge Tips and Tricks, and this is called um, Invasion Mechanics. Now, uh, here we, uh, we're starting out here on Spire, and basically, in Invasion Mechanics, we're going to break down what makes Invasion Maps play like Invasion Maps. And, uh, you know, we're going to help you forgers out there, you know, um, create maps that play much like uh, matchmaking, you know, that have that great Invasion feel. Um, because Oakley's already showed you how to do aesthetics, he's already showed you some labels, so we're going to show you how to get that great feel down. Now, uh, this episode is going to focus on fire teams. And uh, actually, before I continue any further, um, uh, I'd like to thank the, the Halo Wheelmen uh, because, you know, they're, they're a great group of guys and they definitely helped me and Yardbird with a lot of our ideals. And uh, they also have a post here uh, called Invasion Conceptualization that we'll be um, providing a link down below. And that'll help you uh, understand some of the terminology we use in the video a little bit better. But you don't have to read it, you know, it just uh, depending, depends on how interested you are in the subject. Well, anyways, uh, we're going to start here on fire teams. Now, uh, first off, uh, I feel that Invasion is best played with 12 players, you know, 6 on 6. This allows you to have 3 fire teams with 2 players each, meaning you only have uh, you and your uh, spawn buddy. Now, when you, when you do other numbers of players, the fire teams become, une become uneven and unpredictable, and I, I don't enjoy that. Um, now, generally what you should have is a uh, left team, a middle team, and a right fire team. This is present in all matchmaking and invasion, and it's definitely you know, one of the things that makes invasion fun. And uh, the map is always divided into three sections corresponding to each, the, each fire team. So uh, here, you know, we are on the uh, left team. You ever heard of, you over here? All right. Now, basically, um, the left team always attacks left, the right team attacks right, and middle team goes up middle. Um, just because of time purposes, you know, it's it's much quicker to attack the objective you spawn closer to, and once you die, you know, it's much easier to get back into the fight. Yeah. So, um, like you said, left team attacks left. It, it's just it's unreasonable for the left team to want to cross diagonally over the map to uh, to help the right team when their their own objective could be just as easily taken. And that's when the middle team comes into play because the middle team has the the most neutral running distance to both objectives just be you know by virtue of being the middle team you know they can make their choice on which which side needs to be defended which side needs help or which side doesn't need help you know they get to make that decision multiple times through their uh, through their journey up to the objectives here you know you could have crossed at the river to join either team at the start you can run through the junkyard right here and then just uh, kind of pick your locations you know where's where the elites at do I want to be seen do I want to create a distraction or do I want to wait and see what everyone's doing so I can just pick the objective that I know I can take right away and so the middle team gets to they get to play that extra hand that will just really boost the offense or defense whichever team you're on it'll just boost the the odds in their favor yes yeah, because uh, the middle team can instantly turn a, a two on two into a four on two or a three on two and that's something that that really that's that's basically the uh, dynamic flank in invasion, and that's how you you overwhelm one of the sides and you know grab the objective. And also, uh, with that said, it, it's it's a really good uh, idea to think of invasion uh, has a three v three game type. You think of each fire team as a unit. You know, each fire team is pit against another fire team, and that fire team's trying to overwhelm the opposite fire team. And that that's that's kind of the idea behind it. Um, it has almost a uh, almost a, a doubles feel and a BTB feel at the same time, in a sense. That's that's the way I feel about it anyways. And also touching on that, um, we're going to just jump on spawn distance, uh, no, excuse me, uh, objective distances real quick. Now, I think objectives should always be just about a sprint apart from each other, um, just because it allows defenders uh, to, to be able to actually defend both objectives reasonably and uh, be able to support you know their coordinating fire teams. Um, so it would be a, a sprint apart or two evades apart for elite defense maps like this. So it's a little a bit over a sprint here. Yeah, you definitely want uh, just a little over sprint. It would be desirable. Like you can see, we'll sprint across the area here, and we're into the zone here by the end of a sprint. But we're not, you know, we're not completely in the territory ready to capture it within a sprint. So you want to give that little extra recharge time that it needs, and that just helps balance things out. And with that. Um, comes spawning distances. Now, obviously, you want to give defenders a little bit of priority over their um, over their respective objectives. You know, right team wants to be able to defend the uh, the right objective right off a of spawn there, and the same with the left team. You know, give them about two evades or two sprints, depending on who's uh, who's defending uh, to their objective. And then, um, but you don't want to give them a direct line of sight. You know, they have to. You want to have to 
you don't want them to camp in their spawns and just completely own the objective from here. They have to be able to move into it and push forward and out of the objective to defend it. And also with that being said, you also want to include a, a large line of sight blocker, at least a single one, separating the objectives. And also, you know, help separate the map. If you notice this large cape here, um, uh, separates Alpha and Bravo. And as well, there's a, you know, additional cover around Bravo that, that separates it a little bit more. Um, the idea is that, um, you know, you have to have, your team has to split um, based on their fire teams and defend each objective. You don't want, you don't want to support people being heroes, you know, defending both objectives at the same time from some uber position. You want to have to uh, force players to work together and, uh, you know, actually be able to, to coordinate together to, to, let's say, maybe four or five guys could be coming right, and, you know, you have to shift the team accordingly to defend that objective. You don't want the Bravo guys to be able to sit over there and then shoot all the way over here. You know, that's just bad design. And uh, also touching on that, uh, um, me and uh, Yarbird feel that it, the uh, default invasion loadouts are the best for invasion, or at least the best starting point. You know, we feel that uh, you want to design your map around the loadouts, and, uh, you know, unless it's the, you know, your last, uh, it's the only thing you could do to uh, possibly get the map to play, maybe change the loadouts then. Yeah, basically the, the issue is the default invasion loadouts, they work. They're very balanced between teams. You may not like this armor ability or this weapon placement, but everything balances itself out in the end. So you want to be able to make your map to uh, to co uh, to complement those loadouts, and it just gives it a better chance of making it a matchmaking if it supports default. And not only that, but more players will be able to get the full concept of the map because they won't have to download a custom game type. And, uh, you know, because a lot of players will download invasion maps and not the game type, and they'll play the map, and they won't understand it, and they'll never play it again. So if your map works with default invasion, it's just that much more likable by a, a larger player base. And uh, with that, and, you know, I, I think we've uh, covered just about everything here in this video, don't you think, Yarbird? Yeah, I think we touched up pretty good on it. Uh, basically, just uh, remember to have each team support the side that they spawn on, and you don't, you don't want to promote crossing the map diagonally to, uh, to capture an objective. You know, you spawn, you go forward, or if you're middle team, you can choose to break left or right at different points. And that's, that's the most important thing about fire teams, is you want to split them up but give them a chance to help each other if they need to. Yeah, and um, also here in the future, we're going to be creating an, uh, an invasion uh, testing and um, gamer tag that allow people to uh, post their maps, you know, send their maps to us, and we'll be able to test them in custom lobbies. And, you know, I think that'll be a lot of fun here. Um, uh, and also, we're going to be showing, uh, you know, we're going to be spotlighting some of Bungie's maps, of course, and we're, then we're also going to be spotlighting some of our own as well as some of other people's maps that we feel that uh, do fit, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, that invasion feel, that matchmaking style invasion. Um, uh, and we'll also be spotlighting some of our failed maps uh, just to show you what not to do in the future. And we're going to dwell a lot deeper here on fire teams as well as spawning mechanics, 3x3 three three theory, you know, lots of things you guys don't know about. So, you know, there's a lot more to come. So uh, I hope you guys liked it. And, um, you know, I, I guess we're done now. <laughs> yep. Thanks for watching.